I am at a colossal loss of words at... First of all, this video is going to blow a lot of people's minds. And uh, if it, it's already making the rounds on Instagram and Twitter and my TikTok. I'm just going to have to say this. Look, before we begin, I do not condone any sort of bullying to any directors, writers, actors, anybody. Your thoughts should be put eloquently and respectfully, but also candidly. So with that being that disclaimer, uh, let's begin. Today's video is a surprise one. It's not something that is being talked about in articles. It's not something recent. It's something from 2019. And it's something that I didn't even search for or know about. As you know, I have a few editors and one of my editors brings me cool clips at random for me to post on social media, my TikTok, my Instagram, my Twitter, and for reels and shorts and stuff like that for Star Wars Theory Plus. And he sends me this clip and I'm like, huh, when's this from? He says 2019 in some SoundCloud interview. He didn't tell me the name. So I watch it and I'm unbelievably dumbfounded. I am at literally a loss of words. I don't know what to make of this. I don't even know what to say. There are things that come out in Star Wars, you know, news wise. And mind you, I rather much cover the lore and all that stuff. But I feel like I have, you know, when, when someone insults your family, you kind of feel like you need to protect them. And since Disney's acquisition of Star Wars, it's kind of been like that for me, you know, where I felt like, hey, you know, some things are really great and I give it praise and I talk about it candidly. And then there are other things that, you know, not so much. They're, the story is this and that. And that's, you know, that's fine. I try to describe it, you know, as as passionately and eloquently as I can while remaining as respectful as I can. And sometimes, you know, maybe I could do a little bit better job. But then beyond all of that, there are some things that literally leave me dumbfounded. And that's what today's video is actually about. Leslie Headland, the creator, the writer, the director behind The Acolyte, does this in an interview. Dude, I, I can't even believe I'm, I'm making this vid. This is just, I, I just can't. Why would Lucasfilm hire someone like this? Like, how is this okay? How is this acceptable for someone to say something like this to? Anyways, let's, you know, I, let's, I've, let's just begin, dude. Um, this is like what we understand to be Star Wars, like, the idea that like that only came from George Lucas, that that o like that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the, the prequels are an ex excellent example of that. I mean, the idea that like when you're hiring a director that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's going to know to hire Ralph McQuarrie, that's the problem. That's the misogyny and the and the and the problem with the auteur myth as it stands today, because they're not thinking this is the person that will hire the right people. And this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place. They're just thinking, do you know, do you have all the answers? And the truth is, is that nobody does. And anybody that says they do is lying. Let's watch that one more time and give it another take in case we forgot anything, missed anything and to really absorb everything that was said. This is like what we understand to be Star Wars, like the idea that like that only came from George Lucas, that that o like that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the, the prequels are an ex excellent example of that. I mean, the idea that like when you're hiring a director, that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's gonna know to hire Ralph McQuarrie, that's the problem. That's the misogyny and the, and the, and the problem with the auteur myth as it stands today. Because they're not thinking this is the person that will hire the right people and this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place. They're just thinking, do you know, do you have all the answers? And the truth is, is that nobody does and anybody that says they do is lying. She's essentially saying that George Lucas isn't the only one that holds the key to Star Wars. And to that, of course, I would argue, I'd say, well, this is the literal creator of Star Wars. That There would be no Star Wars if it wasn't for George Lucas. So yes, he does hold the key. He is the one who created the cake. He made the pie, man. He put all the ingredients in. He actually went out and manufactured all the ingredients. And yes, he is the only one that holds the key. He is the only one that can tell this story. And now that she is a director for writing her acolyte show, which I have touted, and you can, this is written in the books, in all the videos, everything is recorded. I have been extremely excited for, I have promoted 
on my own accord, on my own interest, thinking that this show is going to be pretty damn cool. Maybe she's looking at all of the Legends content that's out there. None of that was made by George Lucas. It was made by, you know, James Luceno, Alan Dean Foster, Paul S. Kemp, Matthew Stover. So yes, her point that other people can create Star Wars is very much valid. But I think she is forgetting the main thing here, that George Lucas, as the creator, is literally the one that gives the approval of all of these projects to do these extracurricular expanded universe projects and things and books and games and all this and that. The level of gull that it takes to actually insult the creator of the project that you are now working for, to me, it, it I, I can't even make sense of it. That's how stupid this is. That's how uh, under utterly ridiculous, I'm losing my mind over it, man. I just, I, I can't make sense of this. And this is, you know, mind you, this is the second time that someone in her project, herself, and then one of her actors has talked about the patriarchy and misogyny and all this crap that is apparently so prevalent in Star Wars. And I'm really just wondering, like, can you guys just entertain me? Can can we just go back to making a cool story? Can we just have some cool lightsabers chopping shit up and, and some force powers and maybe some stories about family and, and heroism and, and becoming a better human being? Where is all of this misogyny and patriarchy in Star Wars that I'm I'm missing? And it seems like it's very acolyte centric. And I'm very confused why this is so prevalent in Star Wars. Does it exist in the world? Of course, we're not in the world. We're in a galaxy far, far away. You know, in the 80s and 90s, we had some of the most heroic and epic and badass female characters that ever existed. Ripley, for example, in Alien. Nobody said, oh, she's a really cool female character. No, they're just like, oh, she's badass. She's cool. Nobody questioned that this is a chick. Nobody cares. No one, no cares. one cares. I don't care that Luke Skywalker is a man. I don't care that Rey is a girl. I just care if it's a good character or not. Can we leave it at that? Is that really too difficult to understand? Can you just entertain me? Like, what is this crap? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I literally feel like I'm Mugatu, like I'm confused. Does nobody else see this? Why does this keep happening? This is like what we understand to be Star Wars. Like the idea that like that only came from George Lucas, that that o like that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the, the prequels are. Notice how she pauses. A and I think the prequel trilogy is an excellent it's an excellent example of that i mean the idea that like when you're high like bro just imagine writing for star wars and then insulting the creator of said project saying that he's the only one that should that holds the key and being irate about it being upset about it and then going ahead and insulting the other half of literally his whole story airing a director that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's going to know to hire Ralph McQuarrie. That's the problem. That's the problem, guys. That's the misogyny. That's the misogyny. That is the misogyny. You know what? Maybe I don't understand the definition, definition of misogyny. Let's get the definition of misogyny right here. Hatred of contempt for or prejudice against women. It is a form of sexism that is used to keep women at a lower social status than men, thus maintaining the social roles of patriarchy. Misogyny has been widely practiced for thousands of years. And no doubt that it has been. But what the hell does that have to do with George Lucas's Star Wars? And the, and the, and the problem with the auteur myth. This is like what we understand to be Star Wars. Like the idea that like that only came from George Lucas. That, that, o like that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the- George Lucas is the only one that holds the key to understanding Star Wars. If you take note, 99% of the stuff that Disney has made is crap. And the 1% is done by Dave Filoni, who was trained by George Lucas. When you're hiring a director that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's gonna know to hire Ralph McQuarrie, that's the problem. That's the misogyny. Okay, so she feels that if she is the director that's been hired in the room and everyone is waiting for George Lucas and excited for George Lucas and not so much her as the director or whoever, then that is the misogyny. Then that is in her world holding women to a lower standard and keeping them down because everyone is, is excited for George Lucas. And to that, I say that her ego is literally the size of the Death Star. I don't think being excited for George Lucas entering the room is, um, you know, any sign of misogyny or anything like that. 
I think that's just people being excited for a literal uh, revolutionary and a hero and someone who has changed the way we do things in this world, such as literally editing created by George Lucas. I mean, how many of us edit? Uh, the ability to edit this reel, the ability to edit your YouTube videos, edit movies, the ability that... <laughs> the irony, ironic. The, her editing her movie, Acolyte, Acolyte, the show, her editing it. She basically was helped out by George because of that, because of the work that he put in in the 70s. So you know what? That might also be misogyny. That's the problem. And the, and, the, and the problem with the auteur myth as it stands. It's a tour myth. There's no such thing as an auteur myth. Yeah, okay, well, I, I guess my editor got the caption for that wrong, or maybe it was automated, I don't know, but I, I don't know what an auteur myth is today because they're not thinking this is the person that will hire the right people and this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place they're just thinking do you know do you have all the answers and the truth is is that nobody does and anybody that says they do is lying like the level of entitlement in the way she's saying this stuff man it's like yes george lucas does hold the key he created star wars what is what is so wrong with that what's the problem is it because he's a man if he was a female, I believe, like, dude, all of her issues would not even exist. It's just so strange to me. I just really don't understand any of this. Like, where did we go wrong as people? Like, where, where did we where did we go wrong just as Star Wars fans? Like, we don't deserve this. Why are we getting this? Why are these people being hired? Why are they being paid millions of dollars to carry on the story that George Lucas created? I don't get it, dude. I believe that these people aren't really in touch and the people hiring these people are even more out of touch to be hiring them. And I think some change is in order. I think something really needs to change and shift with the hiring process at Lucasfilm, at Disney. Uh, I think, you know, Dave Filoni and John Favreau are really the best candidates that we have. I think Bryce Dallas Howard is extremely gifted and creative, and I think she does a great job. But I think it all comes down to, you know, really the, the writers. And like we've seen with the sequel trilogy, the writing hasn't been all that good and all that planned out. So going forwards, I'd really like to see some people who know Star Wars, in my opinion. I'm not saying I know Star Wars better than anybody else, but I do feel like I have a good grasp of it. I do feel like I understand, you know, the basic themes. I understand kind of the magic of Star Wars and what it really is, just as much as any other Star Wars fan who's been watching since they were six in the 90s. And I feel like ever since Disney has purchased Star Wars, it's really taken quite a shift in a sense with not only their content, but also the fans themselves. Everything has become so unbelievably political. Everything has become so about sexism and misogyny. And this, and it's, it's, it's really disheartening to see, man. Like I'm really sometimes taking a, a look at all this and I'm remembering, you know, the times when I was arguing Star Wars in person with nerds in the comic shop or um, online forums, so many conversations. It was never about this stuff. It was only about content. It was only about the story and the fictitious characters. It was never about this crap, man. Like I just, I don't, I really don't get it. And, and you know, this is coming from someone who one day wants to have daughters and I want my daughters to feel welcomed in this world and to have every sort of advantage that they can just as much as anybody else, any other human. So I just, uh, you know, this is not, what, what I say doesn't come from a place of <laughs> misogyny or anything like that. It's, I love women and I want them to have every single opportunity, every, every amount of health and happiness and success uh, as men. But I also wish that for men too, you know, it's not a one over the other kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I remember I was, I, I dated someone once and they said, you know, um, men had a good run. And uh, it was at that moment that I was like, hmm. I think as, you know, a species on this planet, and this is getting a little bit, you know, maybe out of Star Wars, and I'll shut my mouth in a minute here. But I think if we as a species are meant to really progress um, as one, as, as Earth, as humans, uh, regardless of gender and color, I really do think that we need to put all of this crap behind us and move forwards and not focus so much on how different we all are. So yeah, I mean, look, I'm getting tired of talking about this stuff, but I will never let something like this fly. And I feel like if you are a true Star Wars fan, 
It'd be great if you voiced your opinions respectively, respectfully about these kind of things too, because we can't let this stuff keep going on, man. These kind of people I don't think should be working for Star Wars. And I am not for, you know, getting anyone fired. I am not for taking the bread from anyone's mouth. But I think there needs to be a change when it comes to speaking so disrespectfully about the creator of Star Wars, George Lucas. And I feel like he's gotten enough crap in his life, you know, from haters who didn't like the prequel trilogy to now the people who are continuing his story and adding to his story under the guise and the rules of Disney. And I feel like this is something that she should have been talked to about. This is something that she should have made an apology about. I just think this is really unacceptable. And it just, at the end of the day, hurts their own brand because there are now going to be millions of people who will see this if they haven't already, when the original one came out, amongst all the other crap that she has said, and her actor's talent, which will really dissuade people from the acolyte. And look, if I was all about money and views, I would be pumping up every single freaking Disney project that there is because I want to bring in as many people as I can to those watch parties and those breakdowns so that I'll get views by the hundreds of thousands to the millions on everything. But that's really not my care or my interest. I'm here to talk about Star Wars and my thoughts about Star Wars. And that's literally it. And that's why I feel a lot of people don't really understand. So again, I'm at a loss for words. And um, let's just watch it one more time. This is like what we understand to be Star Wars. Like the idea that like that only came from George Lucas. That that o like the only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the, the prequels are an ex excellent example of that. I mean, the idea that like when you're hiring a director that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's going to know to hire Ralph McQuarrie, that's the problem. That's the misogyny and the, and the, and the problem with the auteur myth as it stands today, because they're not thinking this is the person that will hire the right people. And this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place. They're just thinking, do you know, do you have all the answers? And the truth is, is that nobody does. And anybody that says they do is lying. This is like what we understand to be. I don't think everyone has all the answers in the world, but I do think when it comes to Star Wars, George Lucas does have all the answers because it's fake and he made it up anyhow uh, these are my thoughts and sentiments on it please be respectful please be respectful i'm asking you if you respect me and you respect george lucas and you respect qui-gon jinn and you know the way of the jedi be respectful the best way to get your point across is to be as respectful as possible because then nobody can say anything and they'll just have to read your facts and listen to your facts and listen to your sentiment and they can't pick up on anything or deflect onto you know your attitude or insulting whatever so that is the number one thing that i think i, I really want to get out there is if we create an army of respectful star wars fans that debate on the internet no matter how ludicrous and crazy and insulting the other side is then we always come out as the winner because they'll just be seen as this psycho rude toxic bullying person and we're not falling for that. So I really think that if you are going to ever talk about anything to do with Star Wars, just be respectful and get your point across as smart and eloquently as you can. I'm gonna go ahead and watch the prequel trilogy because I need to understand why George Lucas has the key to Star Wars. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, remember, Force will be with you always. Fulfill your destiny.